Welcome everyone to Adopting SaaS Via into Your Business, Data Success Tales from a Central Bank's Perspective. I'm Ben Zenick, founder and CTO at Zencos, where we've been partnering with SaaS to deliver actionable analytics to our customers for almost 20 years. My background is in data and analytics, where I lead teams of highly experienced consultants across many industries, including financial services, which my co-author Leah Saheli is part of. Leah is the director of the Monetary and Financial Statistics Unit of ECCB's Statistics Department and project manager and technical lead for their statistical enterprise solution. She holds a BCom in finance and BA in mathematics from St. Mary's University in Canada and an MSc in statistics from the University of Western Ontario in Canada. She's a professional statistician and an accreditation committee member of the American Statistical Association. Without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Leah. Thank you, Ben. So the purpose of the presentation is to give you some background on ECCB, what we're trying to achieve from the solution and the solution that we implemented. So who is ECCB? The Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB, is the monetary authority for a currency union with a quasi-currency board arrangement. There are eight member countries, six of which are independent and two are territories of the United Kingdom. So the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank has an agreement act from 1983 that lays out the purpose of the ECCB, and it includes regulating the availability of the money and credit, promoting and maintaining monetary stability and sound financial structure. It provides credit and exchange conditions conducive to the balance, growth and development of the economies of the member countries, and it promotes economic development. The ECCB has as its main target the maintenance of a competitive fixed exchange rate. It has, in fact, maintained such a fixed rate to the US dollar of 2.7 to 1 US over the last 43 years. The ECCB supervises and regulates the commercial banks in its member countries and other deposit-taking institutions that are licensed under the Banking Act. Now, over the last 10 years, there's been exponential growth in data demands for both financial and economic data. And we've seen that the data growth has led to capacity issues, there's been an increase in the data requests from internal and external clients, and there's been inefficient processes for extracting publicly accessible data. These insufficient advanced technology that we have has been antiquated, and there's been a lot of manual processes. We also saw insufficient advances in the analytics and reporting framework. So in order to meet those demands, we have been engaged in a long-standing partnership with SAS and Zencos and started with the implementation of SAS 9.3 and in 2019 built our first Linux deployment where we went live with a statistical enterprise system version 2. So in 2013, ECCB began exploring options for this new statistical enterprise solution to house data submitted by various providers, such as the commercial banks, statistical offices, and other government agencies. SAS was selected as ECCB's choice, and their digital transformation began by automating manual processes and expanding our statistical and reporting capability. So in order to meet the demands of our customers, the solution was designed, developed and implemented as a statistical system covering collection, processing, storage and dissemination of data by leveraging SAS's data integration and business intelligence platforms. But the solution is only as good as the data collected. So before we can focus on analytics and reporting, we first had to tackle the complex data requirements which Ben will discuss in more detail. Thank you, Leah. So since paper is part of the data management track, let's jump into some of the solution specific requirements as it relates to managing all of the disparate data provided 
by the entities that Leah just referenced to the ECCB. So the solution is, is built on the intake of data from over 200 providers that are made up of uh, the, the various entities Leah previously mentioned, as well as entities such as trading partners and banking and non-banking financial institutions. The providers are responsible for submitting approximately 75 different types of forms into the solution. And so as these forms are collected, they include data such as balance sheet data, asset liabilities, daily, daily liquidity statements, debt, loan performance, anti-money laundering reports, among other types of forms submitted by these external entities. So based on the volume and frequency of the disparate data and the disparate submitters of the data, the system was built to ensure quality data coming into the system. This is done through an interactive real-time data collection system that is intended to eliminate or reduce the amount of manual intervention required to ensure quality data is consumed and valid results can be produced. In order to support the collection, transformation, and the dissemination of this data, a reusable, scalable data management framework was de defined and designed for the ECCB. The solution is built on both various SaaS and open source technologies, which we'll talk about and show as we go through the remainder of this presentation. So as you look at this diagram, it may appear to be a little bit non-traditional from a data management or a data management architecture. You see a lot of SaaS and open source and different technologies with the end users interacting with the system from a user, user interface perspective. Well, one of the, the beauties of the SaaS platform is just that. With VIA, it allows you to transform your data capabilities through its openness and by making it do and be what you want it to be. <clears throat> so in our case, we've used it as a framework to enhance and modernize our digital capabilities of collecting data from our data providers. We wanted it to be a system that can securely intake different types of data from these providers through a custom user interface written in some of the more modern user interface technologies like Node.js, Angular, and leveraging Python web services. These web services, as you can see from this screen from the user interface, are communicating to a backend SaaS server that's running Dataflux West RESTful web services, providing data validation and data quality checks as data is being provided into the system and uploaded into the system by our, our external entities. Only system validated data is allowed in. And once that validation occurs, there are more traditional data management processes that are running behind the scenes using SAS's data management server, as well as SAS's DS2 and Fed SQL processes, which we'll discuss a little bit later in the presentation why that technology was selected and the value that it provides. The end result of these processes and the architecture is the confidence in knowing that the data available is of the highest quality for reporting and analytics and is consumable through SAS via and trusted by all entities and providers that, that are using this, this technology. Uh, as, as we'll discuss in the data management processes in a bit, the end result is that through this process, we have to support a very diverse user community that Leah will now tell us a little bit more about before we describe in further details how the data now gets to that user community. Thank you, Ben. So who are our users? Who uses this statistical enterprise system? So as a central bank, we also use the data because we would want to look at the data that's coming in and make sure the data is of high quality. So we have an automated um, data management process, which helps that. We also have our reporting um, using SAS Fire for auditing and compliance. We can look at that. And then we, of course, can do some estimation and forecasting and some data analytics using SAS Fire. We also have the IMF. They're one of our main users. 
So we'll hear more about that from Ben as we talk about this built in Python based web service API. And he will go into that. And then we have the external entities such as um, the Ministry of Finance that we will try to provide data for monthly reports in particular. And then we have our website. The East City has its own website where here you can access some predefined reports, the economic and financial review. So these are the type of data that we would want to provide to the public. Now, our users can create reports to do surveillance and oversight. We can use the solution to estimate and forecast data, perform validation and analysis of submitted data prior to reconciling the data. We would manage the data used for collection and transformation process, and we would report to the IMF, the government agencies, and the other stakeholders. So the central bank basically does this type of work. Now for our external entities, we would be responsible for submitting the data. They would be sending the data to the ACCB. So not only do they send data to us through the solution, they can actually access this data as well. So they have access to their own data. So we're giving it back to them. And this is not exclusive of, they would have access to compliance and auditing reports. They would have a time series report. So they would be able to have data for a longer period as opposed to the one period that they would have uploaded. And they also have access to a dashboard that we would have created in a report for them to be able to monitor key indicators. For the public, we would provide reports through the ECCB website, as well as in various frequencies, and as well as by the countries. So remember, we have eight member countries and we would have reports available for each of those countries for various frequencies. So we would have created some dynamic data-driven reports for, for them. And so I'll let Ben explain how the IMF, a critical partner of ours, if he can elaborate on how we provide them with our surveillance data. So as the ECCB has been uh, modernizing their approach to data collection and dissemination, the IMF has as well. There's processes that the ECCB used to have to go through to provide the surveillance data to the IMF, which included creating Excel files or, or various formatted text files and uploading them through a uh, data upload web interface that the IMF provided, making sure that it met certain standards and, and, and formats that the IMF needed. So as we've gone through this digital transformation with ECCB, we've also modified and modernized the way that the IMF now interacts with the central bank in order to get the data that they require for their oversight and surveillance. This includes using their integrated collection system, which is built upon the statistical data and metadata exchange standards that are out there, and that's an international standard. Uh, the, the web services are, are designed where the IMF can request various endpoints, whether it's programmatically or through a browser, to retrieve certain data at all frequencies by various countries or all countries by a specific frequency. And so the ECCB has set up a, um, an Apache service in the DMZ that the IMF can make secure requests to to receive and retrieve data based on their format that they require uh, for for providing results to them for their surveying, surveillance and oversight. So, so how does all this data get into the system and how do we ensure that the data is of high quality as we discussed and has been validated prior to entering the system? So we've developed as a, as a front end, a data collection process that these over 200 entities can submit up to the 75 different types of both economic and financial data through the secure interface that is a custom deployed via application. So it's it's the application we referenced earlier written in um, some more modernized web development technologies. 
And that interface uses web services to communicate between a backend SaaS process and a front end user interface to ensure that the data being submitted and selected for submission by a provider from the user interface is consistent with not only the data in the form, but data across forms. So for instance, we're checking to make sure that the dates within the form match what the provider thinks they're submitting. We make sure that there's prerequisites if they exist, that they've been loaded prior to a particular form being loaded by a provider. We determine whether forms have already been submitted or not. We also make sure that the form that's being submitted is the version as defined by ECCB, meaning columns and indicators available to a particular form exist in that form. So we do comparison matches based on different versions, which are determined based on date ranges that that version is applicable to. Check things like the number of columns are, are exist that are supposed to, the correct indicators or metrics exist in the forms that are supposed to, whether a particular indicator can have missing data or not, whether a particular indicator allows negative data or not. And then we do things like ensure that within a form, different indicators are consistent or across forms, those indicators are consistent. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, as well as variances. So from one period to another, we're checking to make sure that the, the variance between a value for one indicator doesn't exceed a threshold as defined by ECCB. And as, as a user goes through this process, I think one of the, the important things we'll talk about is just that interactive feedback and whether or not as, as I'm editing the user interface, what's happening on the back end. So I, I make a submission, the back end web services are called in real time so that the end users getting and receiving real time feedback either related to a specific form or a metric within that form to ensure that that the the upload and that the data validation is passing what's expected by ECCB. So the user interface returns a pass fail based on the step that the user is going through at a particular time of upload. For instance, if a user submits a form that's inconsistent within the form or across another form, the UI will actually stop the process until that issue is resolved. So in this particular scenario, a data quality check failed because the comparison, as you can see, between the left-hand side and the right-hand side values were not equal to each other. And so the process stopped and it will keep track of and audit issues like this so we know what's the progress of data that's being collected, how many times have data failed as they've been trying to enter the system so we can continually improve the system and, and, and try to identify where a recurrence of particular issues happen so we can coach our providers to submit data uh, one time and not have to have them go through iterations of data not making it into the system. Another example that would not stop the process, but would make a, a user actually interface and provide data back into the system is a variance check. So this does require intervention, but does not fail or stop and halt the upload process. So as a user is entering the data and they're uploading the data, the system's going to check whether or not data from one period for a particular indicator is within a specified range, as you can see on the screen here, and whether the criteria is within that threshold for that particular indicator. And if it doesn't meet the threshold, that data must be marked as a variance exception and an explanation needs to be provided prior to the data being uploaded into the system. One of the things that this data can then be leveraged for is other analytics like text analytics and, re and reporting on whether, uh, what kind of trends are occurring during submissions. So it's not until all of these checks have actually passed that data is actually entered into the system for analysis and then subsequent batch processing. A key component to the system is the ability and this, this interaction and communication with an end user to let them know that the data has been successfully uploaded 
It provides confidence in the data in the system because they know that they've gone through all of the checks that are required to ensure quality data and valid data coming into the system. So once all this data has been passed and entered in the system, there's additional processes that occur to prepare it for dissemination to the stakeholders. All that's accomplished through data transformation. So data transformation incorporates this reusable set of methods that are used during that data collection process, but those methods are now expanded to allow us to not only do those real-time checks we just saw, but to do some data aggregation and data consolidation. So the system is taking these 70,000 indicators that are uploaded through these various economic and financial forms, consolidating them across potentially three formulas per indicator across up to five frequencies over a range of three years, potentially, depending on the transformation process that's being loaded per entity. So there's a lot of combinations of data that need to be done. And we've created a, as part of our data transformation and ETL process, a system that can dynamically generate these queries and allow us to take advantage and reuse components, both on the fly as well as through standard ETL processes when batch jobs are running. And so these batch jobs as a result are going to take and use this standardized code for not only allowing us to load data into a data warehouse, but also allow system administrators and statistics department users to validate data as they go through building out formulas. So they can take these the same programs and they can use them to alter or create or modify formulas and test them to ensure that they're introducing results that are expected into the system. This is going from anything from what is a quote unquote simple calculation, which isn't simple obviously, but you're taking you know various sets of data, you're ensuring that the data has is being included uh, but all the way from the appropriate entities that have submitted the data, all to complex calculations that actually have different uh, aggregation methods within a calculation. Indicators may look at different periods, but it's the same piece of reusable code that does this. So the benefits of, of this data management architecture, or some of the benefits are program once used many times, as well as having this dynamically generated formula builder that can be executed at runtime, allowing for changes over time and in the inclusion of only applicable data and available data to the system. So in summary, what this system has allowed the ECCB to do is modernize their processes of collecting data and disseminating analysis to not only their internal stakeholders, but also their member countries by leveraging SaaS and open source technologies to create a data-driven, manageable system that empowers ECCB to be able to make changes and support the system as, they, as it grows over time. This is allowing them to be more effective in the support of their customers as well as the data providers within their region. So with that said, I'd like to thank you all for attending or, or watching this webinar. And if you have any questions, please feel free to follow up with myself uh, at this email address or Leah as well. And um, we look forward to hearing from you all. Thank you very much and hope everybody has a, has a good day. Thank you.